students today i am here to do the last revision exercise in your textbook so we covered all theory related to your textbook so this is the final review so before you start to do this one make sure that you revise all third term work so we'll see what are the questions here represent all the solutions of x minus 3 less than minus 1 on a number line so before that we need to solve this so when you take this inequality you can see minus 3 you have to take it to the other side so what you do you add 3 to both sides so you get x less than 3 minus 1 2 so that's the inequality you are getting so represent all the solutions on the number line 2 is not included so we draw an open circle and this is less less means you have to do left side so that means color put an arrow or line to the left side so you can get any solution in this region what is the inequality represented on the number line now look at this one here one is here colored and three is not colored and here there's no intersection so we can write x is less than minus three and not included or x is greater than or equal to 1. So this side greater than or equal to 1. Children below 13 years of age. Boys. In the Venn diagram drawn to illustrate the information on the grade 9 students of a certain school. Shade the region which represent the girls who are below 13 years of age and express it in terms of S and girls so that means not belongs to this so outside m who are below 13 so this is children below 13 years old so that means this region girls who are below 13 years of age so this region so how can we color this with a color like this this is the region that we need. Express this in terms of S and M. This is M dash outside M but intersects with S. So M dash intersects with S. S is the children below 13 years of age. Write the elements in B dash based on the information in the Venn diagram. B dash. B dash means everything outside B. So small circle is B. Outside you have to write down C, D, E, G. C, D, E, G, F, F also. F is outside B. In the parallelogram A, B, C, D, B, C is 20. And B, L, that's B, L, the perpendicular line is 10. And D, M is 18. Calculate the perimeter of A, B, C, D. Perimeter of A, B, C, D means we need to find out the length C, D. So we can find out using area. We know that area of ABCD parallelogram is equal to base into perpendicular height. That's also equal to when you take the other way around, that's equal to CD into 10. From this equation, you can find the length CD. So, what's CD? 20 times 18 divide by 10. So 2, 2 times 18, you get 36. So that's 36 centimeters. Now you can find out the perimeter. Perimeter.
millimeter is equal to double of thirty-six plus this length twenty. Because twenty twenty thirty-six thirty-six. So two times here you get fifty-six. Two times six twelve. Two times five ten plus one. 11. So the perimeter is 112 centimeters. A number is picked at random from a set of 20 identical cards numbered 1 to 20. What is the probability of drawing a triangular number? So what are triangular numbers? First you need to identify what are triangular numbers. 1 3, 6, then 10, 15, and 21. 21 you can't write. So 1 and 20 included, 1 I wrote there. So what is the probability of drawing a triangular number? How many numbers are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if it's A or something, I'll put T. NT is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So what's NE? In the universal set, 1 to 20 numbers, so 20 altogether. So what's the probability of getting a triangular number? Number of outcomes in T over number of outcomes in the Universal set, 5 over 20, you can write 1 over 4. Let A denote the set of the letters of the word numbers. If a letter is drawn at random from this set, what is the probability of being M? So, you have to find out how many letters are there. N, U, M, B, E, R. Yes, all are different letters. So, you have to write all. So, you are selecting M. So, all together how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 numbers are there. Out of that, how many M's are there? 1. So, what's the probability of getting letter M? One possibility out of seven. Find the value of x. This is a polygon. How many sides? One, two, three, four, five. So pentagon. Here when you extend the sides, you get all exterior angles. So what's the property? For any polygon, the sum of exterior angles add up to 360. So, we'll find out this angle first. If this is 110, this is 70. 180 minus 110. Now, 70 plus 50. You get 120. And this 90. You have to add 90 as well. 210. So, we can find out x, x and x, 2x plus 210 is 360. All exterior angles add up to 360. So, what is 2x? 360 minus 210, 150. So, x equals 150 divided by 2. 75 degrees. So 75 is the value of x. So you can write down the reason sum of exterior angles is 360. In a certain regular polygon, an interior angle is 150 more than an exterior angle. Find the number of sides it has. 
So if exterior angle is x, interior angle is 150 more than x. So 150 plus x. But we know interior angle plus exterior angle is 180. So you can find x from that. 180. So 2x equals 180 minus 150. Take 150 there. So you get 30. Divide by 2. x equals 15. Now we found out exterior angle, one exterior angle and this is a regular polygon. So regular polygon means how many sides are there? Number of sides you can find using this number of sides becomes 360 altogether. When you divide by one exterior angle, you can find number of sides. 15 times 2, 30. For 60, that's 4. This is number of sides. So number of sides, 24 sides. Simplify. x plus 1 over 2 minus 3x minus 2 over 6. Now there's a minus sign. Make sure that you put brackets. Otherwise, you will forget to multiply by minus. So, when you see a minus, put brackets. Now, convert to the same denominator. Convert to 6. 6 is the lowest common multiple. You have to multiply this by 3. 3 times x plus 1. And this one you can write as it is. Then, expand brackets. 3x plus 3 minus 3x and minus minus becomes plus, that's plus 2. Then 3x, 3x get cancelled out. 3 plus 2, 5. 5 over 6. Simplify. a plus 1 over a minus 3. 4 minus 2a, a minus 3. Put brackets. A minus 3 is the common denominator. You can write. Then expand brackets. A plus 1. This becomes minus 4 and plus 2a. Minus minus plus. Now add it. 2a and a becomes 3a. And minus 4 plus 1 minus 3. So can we simplify? You can't simplify. You can take a out but you can't simplify with a minus 3. So you can write 3 and if you are factorizing this becomes a minus 1 over a minus 3. According to the information in the given figure find the bearing of B from A. From A means this is the position. So B is here so this angle they want. How you find out that angle? 180 is this, 140, this becomes 40. But when you are writing bearings, you have to write in three digits. 0, 4, 0 degrees. The bearing of A from B, that means you have to take B point now. From north, this is the angle you need. That's the bearing. We know these two lines are parallel. If this is 40, what is this angle? This is 180 minus 40 because those are allied angles. When you get parallel sides, the allied angles add up to 180. So if this is 40, this becomes 140. So how, how can you find out the bearing? 360 minus 140 you get 220 degrees that's the bearing of a from b a scale diagram is drawn to the scale 1 to 50000 
if the direct distance between the two cities A and B is 8 kilometers, what is the length of the line segment in the scale diagram that represents this distance? 1 to 50,000. 1 centimeter is 50,000 centimeters. Now you need to convert to kilometers. What's the first step? You divide by 100. So that's 500 meters. Then divide by 1000 to convert to kilometers. 1, 2, 3, 0 0.5 kilometers. So that means 1 centimeter represents 0 0.5 kilometers. Now you have to do other way around. If this is 0.5 kilometers, map scale is 1 centimeter. What about 8 kilometers? So that means 1 over 0.5 into 8. So we need to get rid of this decimal point. Multiply by 10, 80, divide by 5. Both the numerator and the denominator you have to multiply by 10. 80 over 5, so that means 5 times 1 and 6. So 16 centimeters is the map length. If the mean of the collection of data is 10, find the median. So we'll first find x. So what's mean? 12 plus 8 plus x plus 16 plus 16 plus 5 plus 10 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When you divide by 5, the answer is 10. That's how we find out the mean. Now multiply by 5, you get here 20, 30, 35 plus 6. That's equal to 5 times 10, 50. So what's x? 50 minus 35. You get 5, so 50. Now we'll arrange the data set in order. So what's the smallest one? 5. Then 8. 10, 12, 5, 8, 15. So did we write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 15. That's the last number. Now we can find out the median. Median is the middle number when you arrange the data set in order. So median is 10. So they want to find out the median. So median is 10. Now we look at the second part of the revision exercise. So we did short questions before now long questions. Fill in the blanks in the following by using either the symbol subset or element based on the information in the given Venn diagram. 4 4 is an element of Q. So 4 is an element of Q. 7 is not an element outside Q. So not an element. P is inside the universal set. P is a subset of the universal set. P and Q P is a subset of Q because it's inside Q. P intersection Q. P intersection Q means P. That's the same as P. That's equal. So we can say P intersection Q is a subset because itself a subset. Write NP dash, NP dash. First we need to find out what is P dash. Before we find out number of elements, what is P dash? Outside P. So everything outside P. So you can't write 4. So all the numbers except 4. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 
Now, how many elements are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 elements. So, that's 8. How many subsets does Q dash have? Write 4 of these subsets. Q dash. So, first we need to write Q dash. Outside Q. 3, 7, 5, 9. 3, 7, 5, 9. So, you can make several. So, we'll see individual. Write four of these. So, we'll write whatever we can. Q1. You can write separate ones. So, 3, 7, 5, 9. That's separate ones. And if you are taking two, 3, 7, 3, 5, 3, 9, and here that's 3, 3, 7, 3, 5, 3, 9, 7, 5, 7, 9, and then 5, 9. Then you can write 3. 3, 7, 5. Three seven five, three seven nine, these two with this one, this one, then seven five nine. Then you take three. If you take four, four you can write one, two, three, four. So that's the same set. So that's also a subset. And then empty set. Those are the possible subsets. So how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 subsets we can write. The universal set is counting numbers. Multiples of 3, multiples of 2. List out the elements in the above 3 sets. So, universal counting numbers 1 to 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All digits. A. Multiples of 3 from 1 to 20. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Then 21 you can't write. B. Multiples of 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. You can write 20 as well. Represent the above sets in a suitable manner in a Venn diagram. So we'll draw a Venn diagram. Epsilon is here. Now, are there any common ones? 6 is common. 12. So we will first draw two circles like this because this is intersecting. So we can put common ones here. 6, 12, 18. Common ones inside here. And this is A, this is B. A, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. B, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Now all the other numbers you have to put outside the two circles. 1 is not there. 
two, three, four. Five is not there. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, not there. Twelve, thirteen is not there. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen is not there. Eighteen, there, yeah, ninety. So this is the Venn diagram. Write the elements of the these sets given below using the set. So we have to look at it. A. So we wrote all these. So here again you have to repeat three to eighteen. B. What did we get? B. Two, four, up to twenty. Multiples of two. Now we can find a intersection B. Common for both A and B. So we found. Six, twelve, eighteen. And a union B, everything in A and B. So you can write start from two, three, four. Five is not there, six. Seven is not there, eight, nine, ten, twelve. Then fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17 is not there, 18, 19 is not there, 20. A dash, everything outside A. So you can't write 3, 6, 9 up to 18. So we can write all the other numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 is there, 13, 14, 15 is there, 16, 17, 18 is there, 19, 20. Let's say dash, B dash, everything outside B. So 2, starting from 2. So 1, Three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, fifteen, seventeen, ninety. All odd numbers. The number of milk packets that were sold in a canteen of a certain school during fifty days is given below. Write the range. So, when you look at the data set. So, what's the highest number? Highest is, we can see 96. What's the lowest one? Can you see 8 is the lowest? So, subtract 8. So, 88 is the range. By taking the class intervals 30 to 40, 40 to 50 like that, construct a group frequency distribution using all the above data. So, because of this 8, we have to start from 0. Maybe this is a mistake, but we'll take as 8. So, this should be 80 something, but we'll take 8. So, intervals 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 60 to 60, 60 to 70, 72, 80, 80 to 90, 90 to 100. And tally marks we have to count. So we'll do row wise. 31, 34, 38, 40. Now when it comes to boundary values, we'll take for the first interval. So, 40 includes here. 
40. 44 from this one. 44. 43. 45. 47. 45 again. Goes out. And 50. 50 also we have to consider there. 53, 53 is here, 52, 58, 55, 54, cross out, 53 and 61, 61 in the, this one, 63, 65, 66, third row, 66, 68, 64, 63, 66, 67, 62, 63, 66 and 70 include here. Then 71, 73, 74, 75 and 76, 72, 73, 72, 74, now 81. 82, 82, another 82. Now 83, another 83, 84. And then 8, we have to take here 85. 85 is in between. 85, 92. 92 is here and 96 here. So what's the frequency? You get 1, here 0, 0, 4, 5 plus 1, 6, 6, 10, 5, 10, 14, 5 and 4, 9, 5 and 3, 8 and 2. Now when you add all these, you need to get how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 50. Let's check whether you are correct. 10, 19, 23, 29, 39, 40 and yeah, all together 50. So that's correct and then find the modal class and the median class using the above frequency distribution. So what's modal class? Modal class is the one which has the highest frequency. This is 14. So 60 to 70 is the modal class. What's the median class? How do you find out the median class? The middle value should be included in that interval. So 50 divided by 2, 25 and 26. So 25th one we can say roughly. Whereas 25th one. 1, 1 plus 4, you get, I, if you are finding the cumulative frequency, cumulative frequency, 1, 1, 1, 1 plus 4, 5, 5 plus 6, 11, 11 plus 6, 17, 17 plus 14, 31, 31, now no need to add after because 25th one is here. So, median class is also 60 to 70. Calculate the areas of the figures given below. So, we find out the shaded area. So, how do you find out the shaded area? First, find the area of the triangle and subtract the area of the circle. So, shaded area. What's the area of the triangle? Half times base that's 10 perpendicular height is 10 minus pi pi is 22 over 7 what's radius here 3.5 so we can write 3.5 as a fraction 7 over 2 how you get 7 over 2 you can write 3 and a half that is same as 7 over 2 so 7 over 2 into 7 over 2 pi r squared now simplify 2 times 5. So 5 times 10, 50. Minus 
1 7 get cancel out this 2 and this 11 11 times 7 77 divide by 2 so what's 77 divide by 2 38.5 now subtract you get the area 0.5 11.5 square centimeters because this is an area. We'll do this part how we find out the shaded region. Shaded area. Area of the bigger par parallelogram minus area of the smaller one. When you subtract you get the shaded part. So when you take the bigger one base into height perpendicular height is 10 what's the base 15 so 15 times 10 minus if you take the smaller one what's the height 6 and what's the base so we have to find out 15 minus 7 that's 8 15 times 10, 150. 8 times 6, 48. When you subtract, you get 102. So, 102 square centimeters is the shaded area. An interior angle of a certain regular polygon is 100 degrees more than an exterior angle. Calculate the magnitude of an exterior angle. So, you can create an equation if x is the exterior angle what's interior angle x plus 100 we know x plus x plus 100 exterior plus interior is 180 2x equals take 100 to this side 80 x equals 80 divided by 2 that's 40 degrees so what's the exterior angle so, exterior angle is x. That's 40 degrees. Calculate the number of sides of the polygon. How can we find out number of sides? This is a regular polygon. The sum of all exterior angles add up to 316. 360. So, number of sides becomes 360 divided by 1 exterior angle. That's 40. So, you get 9. This is a 9-sided polygon, not a gun. The ratio of an interior angle to an exterior angle of a regular polygon is 3 to 1. Find the sum of the interior angle. So interior angle is x and the other one is 180 minus x. So that's 3 to 1. So what's the ratio interior to exterior? Interior to exterior is 3 to 1. But we know the sum of both angles add up to 180. So find the sum of the interior angles. And you have to find out the exterior angle. From that you can find out the number of sides. Then sum of interior angles. So here we know what's the ratio 3 to 1. So that means 3 parts out of 4, 1 part out of 4. When you multiply by 180 because the sum is 180. So you get the exterior and the interior angle. We don't need the interior. We can simplify this side. Exterior angle. 4 times 4 16. So that's 45. So exterior angle is 45. If exterior is 45 degrees. So, what's the number of sides?
360 over 45 because the sum of all exterior angles is equal to 360. 9 times 5, 9 times 40, so that's 8. This is 8-sided polygon, octagon. Now we know number of sides. You can find out the sum of interior angles. So what is sum of interior angles? You can use the formula N minus 2 into 180. N is 8, 8 minus 2 into 180. So N minus 2, this is 8 minus 2, 6. 6 into 180, you get 6 times 0. This is 48, 4 remaining. 6 times 1, 6 plus 4, 10. 1080 degrees. The sum of the exterior angles of a regular polygon is 5 times the sum of the interior angles. This should be other way around. So, sum of interior angles is bigger than the sum of exterior angles because always sum of exterior angle is 360. So, I'll change this question. This should be interior. And this should be exterior. So, the sum of the interior angles of a regular polygon, sum of interior is, is 5 times the sum of exterior. What is sum of exterior? For any polygon that's 360. Now find the number of sides of the polygon. How do you find out number of sides? You can use the formula n minus 2 into 180 degrees. So you can use that formula. We don't know n. Now solve the equation and find n. You can divide by 180, you get 2. So n minus 2 equals 10. 5 into 2. N is 12. So what's that? Dodecker gun. Find the number of sides. So 12, this is a dodecker gun. Another one. Four interior angles of a certain polygon. 160, 140, 130 and 110. Respectively, the exterior angles corresponding to the remaining interior angles are 30 each. Calculate the number of sides of the polygon. So, we don't know how many extra angles are there because we don't know the number of sides. So, what's the, if you take any polygon, now this is, we don't know number of sides, but we know Sum of the exterior angles, 30. But other exterior angles, different. So this is 180 minus 160 means 20. So like that, exterior angles are different. So we can construct an equation using exterior angles. So we can say exterior angle for this one, 160 Exterior angle is 20. If 140 is there, exterior angle is 40. 130 means 50. 180 minus that. 110 means 70. Plus sum of all exterior angles. And we don't know how many other exterior angles are there. So we'll put, we'll put A. A means number of other exterior angles into 30. But we know the sum is 360 for any polygon. Now we'll solve that. 40 plus 20, 60. 60 plus 50, 110. 110 plus 70, 180. 
plus 30a is equal to 360. Now subtract 180. 30a equals 360 minus 180, you get 180. Divide by 30, you get 6. So 6 means other number of exterior angles. So this is exterior angle 6 was there. This 6 and 7, 8, 9, 10. So what's the total number of sides? 10-sided polygon is there. So that's decagon. So from this we found how many exterior angles. So we know interior or exterior same number of terms. Number of sides is equal to number of Interior angles is equal to number of exterior angles. From that we identify there are 6 exterior angles with 30. Then 6 and these 4 altogether 10. A certain creation is made up of a square, a regular hexagon and a regular pentagon connected together as shown below. Calculate the values of the angles x, y, m and n. x is not sure which angle. But M is here and here. So we'll find out. So we know if it's a square, these angles are 90 degrees. This is 90 degrees. This is 90. And what about this angle? This is a hexagon, regular hexagon. One angle is, interior angle is 120. X is here because 90 this side, 120 this side. So if X is here, you can straight away find out X, 360 minus 90 plus 120 because angle around a point is 360 minus 120 plus 90. 360 minus, so when you add these two, you get 0, 9 plus 2 and two, 210. So subtract these two, you get x, 0, 6 minus 1, 5, 3 minus 2, 150 degrees. If this is 150, you can easily find out y. So 2y is equal to 180 minus 150. Sum of angles in a triangle is 180. So that's 30. So 2y. So what's y? 30 divided by 2. 15 degrees. Now we found out x and y. Now we need to find out m and n. Which one is m? m is here. So we can find out using this point, vertex point. This is 120. What about this one? In a pentagon, what's the angle? 180. So 540 divided by 5, you get 180 each. 108 each. So 108. So this is 108. You can find out a mangle. How you find him? 360 minus the sum of the two angles 120 and 108. That's him. We'll find out. The sum is 228. Subtract. Hundred. 32, 132, that's n. If this is m, you can easily find out n. How you find out n? This is an isosceles triangle. 180 minus 
132 divide by 2 because equally divided. Because n plus n, 2n is equal to that one. When you divide by 2, you get n. So first subtract 48 divide by 2, that's 24 decrease. So we found all the angles x, y, m, n. A, B, C, D is a regular pentagon. A, B, C, D. Regular means all sides are equal. Find the value of a vertex angle of the regular pentagon. How do you find out? We know that if it's regular, sum of angles is, so you can find out one exterior angle and subtract from 180. So we, 360 divided by 5 is the exterior angle. So first find the exterior. 5 times 7, 35. And two, 72. So therefore, interior angle is 180 minus 72. S sum of interior plus exterior is 180. So you get 108 is one angle. Find the value of x. How do you find x? Can you see this is 108? So 2x plus 108 is 180. That's a triangle. Isosceles. So 2x plus 108 is 180. So subtract and divide by 2. That's 72. Divide by 2. You get 36 degrees. That's x. Show that the straight lines EC is parallel to AB. EC is parallel to AB. How do you find? If you get the sum of these is equal to 180, we can say parallel. So we can find now, we know this whole angle is 108. When you subtract X, you can find out this angle. So AEC angle. AEC angle is what? 108 minus X. That's 36. 2 and 7. 72. This is this angle. But we know this is 108. Now, A, we can write EAB angle 108. When you add these two, you are getting 180. So you can write AEC is AEC plus EAB is 180. So that's allied angles. Allied angles are 180. So that means you can write these two are parallel. EC is parallel to AB because the light angles add up to 180. Find the value of T. So fourth part, you find out this angle. This is 108, this is 108, so this is 72. This is 72. So easily you can find out T. T is equal to 180 minus 72 twice. Hundred eighty minus 144. Thirty six degrees is the T angle. Solve the inequality x minus one less than or equal to minus three and represent the set of solutions on a number line. So we'll first solve that. 
It's minus 1 less than or equal to minus 3. Take 1 to the other side. You get add 1. Minus 3 plus 1. X is less than or equal to minus 2. This is equal as well as less. So how you represent? All solutions. Set of solutions. Minus 2 you draw a solid circle and this is le left side. So you draw an arrow to the left. Solve the inequality. 2x over 3 greater than minus 2 and represent all solutions. Solutions on a number line. Multiply both sides by 3. Nothing happens to the sign. So you get 2x greater than minus 6. Now divide by 2. You get x is greater than minus 3. So what you do, you draw an open circle and greater. Greater means towards right side. So we draw the arrow this way right to the right. A container of capacity 10 litres has 3 litres of water in it. If another x litres of water is poured into it, the volume of water in the container satisfies the inequality. 3 plus x less than or equal to 10. Solve this inequality and find the maximum volume of water that can be poured into the container. So you are asked to solve that. 3 plus x less than or equal to 10. Subtract 3 from both sides. Nothing happens to the inequality sign. x becomes 10 minus 3, 7. So x is less than or equal to 7. So that means the maximum value is 7. So this is in liters. So 7 liters of water is the maximum amount. Simplify. So here you have to find out the common denominator. 3, 2, 4. What's the denominator? That's 12. Lowest common multiple of 3, 2, 4 is 12. So convert everything to 12. Multiply by 4. Here. Multiply by 6. So make sure that you put brackets there and here multiply by 3. Open brackets 4m plus 4 minus 6 minus 12m plus 9m plus 6 divide by 12. Now simplify. 4m and 9m, 13m. 13m minus 12m, you get m. Minus 6 and plus 6, 0. And then you get plus 4 there. m plus 4 divided by 12. So the final answer is m plus 4 divided by 12. Look at this one. Denominator is the same. 3 plus a or a plus 3, same. A plus 5 minus 2 minus A plus 6. Now add. First we'll open brackets. A plus 5 minus 2 plus A. Minus minus plus. A and A and A. 3A. 5 minus 2. That's 3. So you get A plus 3. You can't simplify further. You can just take 3 out and write a plus 1. But you can't cross out that. Question number 6. The location of 3 points a, b and c on a horizontal ground is shown in the sketch given below. Find the bearing of b from a. From a. So you have to take this whole angle. That's the bearing. This is 20. So what's the other angle? 180 minus 20, 160 degrees. 
find the bearing of A from B. So from B means you, you take the point B. This is the direction. So you need to find out this angle. So how you find out that angle? If this is 50, this is 50. And here, what is this angle? Now here, this is 70 means this whole thing is 70. So this becomes 20. 50 plus 20, 70. Now we have all the other angles. You can find out this angle first. So we'll take this one. This is 70, 20. That's 90. So this is 90 degrees. 90 plus 20, you get 110. So the whole angle is 100. 90 plus 20 is 110. That's 70 degrees. So if this is 50 in this one, what is this angle? This becomes 20 degrees. So what's the bearing of this? 360 minus 20. 360 minus 20. That's 340 degrees. Find the bearing of A from C. C is this point. So you need this whole angle. Now how we find out here? Can you see? If this is 70, what should be this angle? 180 minus 70. 110. So straight away you can get this angle is 360 minus 110. So that's 250 degrees. A water tank in a school located to the left of the straight road running from north to south is observed on a bearing of 230 from the point which is located on the straight road. The same tank is observed from the point B which is 140 meters to the south of point A on a bearing of 300 degrees. Draw a sketch depicting the above information. Draw a scale diagram by using a suitable scale and find the distance from the water tank to the points A and B. Find the minimum distance from the road to the water tank. So we'll first sketch it. So we'll first sketch it. Water tank in a school located to the left of a straight road. Running from north to south. So that means north to south. This way is observed on a bearing of 230 degrees from the point A which is located on the straight road. So we'll take any point A, 230 degrees. So 230 degrees from here means what's this angle? This angle should be 180, subtract 180, 230 minus 180. 50 degrees. So this is 50. Then, so this is 230 from the point A. The same tank is observed from the point B, which is 140 meters to the south of point A. So 150 meters south from point A. What's the bearing now? 300 degrees. So from there, 300 degrees. So that means, this is 300 means, what's this angle? This is 60 degrees. So it's given the distance also, 140 meters to the south of point A. So this distance is 140, not 150. This is 140. So you are getting something like this. Again, we'll read a water tank in a school located to the left of a straight line running from north to south is observed on a bearing of 230. So this is the water tank.
and the B point is here. So this is the sketch. Now we need to draw to the scale. So what's the scale we can take? 140 meters are there. So if we take one centimeter, represent 20 meters. So that means when you divide by 20, you get 7 centimeters. So 140 meters means we have to take 7 centimeters. So we have to take 7 centimeters. This is 50, 60 and you can draw the sketch. So we'll do that now using straight edge, the ruler and we need the protractor as well. So we'll do that now. We'll take the ruler and we need to draw a 7 centimeter, 7 centimeter length. So we'll take the ruler and draw the 7 centimeter. First draw the, any line. And here we can take the compass to measure exactly 7 centimeters. And we can keep on top of this one and first draw an arc here and again keep on top of this point and draw the other arc. So this is 7 centimeters. Then what you have to do? Then measure. This is this one, 7 centimeters. So point A is here, B is here. Now, 60 degree angle and 50 degree angle. So take the protractor, measure from B, that's 60 degree angle here. And to point A, that's 50 degree angle. So 50 here means 180 minus 50, 130. Now we'll take the ruler and connect B point with this and A point with this. So this is the water tank. This is water tank. So this is we put 60 degrees. This is 50 degrees. Now, find the minimum distance from the road, that's road here, to the water tank. So, that means the perpendicular line. So, we can take the Z square and just draw the perpendicular line. Here, we can keep it on top of this and this and draw the perpendicular line. This one. And this is the perpendicular line and we can find the length. So we can use the compass to measure the length. So take, keep it here. And we'll take this way. Yeah, this distance is the shortest distance. So we'll measure in and see. So we can measure that length using the ruler. So you get 4.9 centimeters. So this is 4.9 centimeters is the map length. So what's the actual length? Actual length is equal to 4.9 into 20. 2 times 9, 18. 2 times 4, 8 plus 1, 9. So here put a decimal, so that's 
98 meters away from this road. Perpendicular. So, the minimum distance is 98 meters. The information on the number of customers that came to a certain bank on a several days is given below. Find the range of the above data. How do you find out the range? Maximum minus minimum. 72 minus 65. You get 7. Last one. Second one. The mode. Highest frequency. Highest frequency is 12. That's 69. That's the mode. And median. What's the median? Middle value. Now all together, how many days are there? You can find the total. 8 plus 2, 10, 20, 25. 25 and 20, 45. 45 and 10, 55. Again, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 55 all together. So median, we'll find the middle value of 55. What's that? Divide by 2. 27.5 means 28th one is the middle term. So you know when you get a decimal, you take the next one. So 28th one. Where you get 28th one? We can add and see. We say that's the cumulative frequency. 2, 2 plus 5, 7. 7 plus 8, 15. 15 plus 10, 25. 25 plus 12, 37. So here is the middle term, 28th one. So the median is 69. Prepare a suitable table to find out the mean of the above distribution. So you can find out the x value. That's 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, and the frequencies are 2, 5, 8, 10, 12, 8, 6, 4. So how we find out the mean value? So we take the total of XF and divide by frequency, total frequency. So how you find XF? Multiply these two. 65 times 2? 130. 5 times 66? 5 times 630, 5 times 630 plus 3, 33. 67 times 8, 8 times 7, 56. 5 is there. 8 times 6, 48 plus 5. 48 plus 5, 53. Then 10 times 68 is 680. 12 times 69. So multiply separately and write down. 60 times, 9 times 12, 10 and 2. 2 times 9, 18. 2 times 6, 12 plus 1, 13. 828. 8 times 70, 560. 8 times 71, 426. 4 times 72, 288. Now find the total. Add all together, 8 and 8, 16. 6 and 6, 12. 12 and 16, you get 28. Put 2 and take 2 here. 3 and 3, 3, 9. 9 plus 2, 11. 11 plus 8, you get 90. 21. 21 plus 2, 23. And then 29, 29 plus 8, 37. And take 3 here. 4 plus 3, 7. 7 plus 5, 12. 12 plus 6, 18. 18 plus 13. What's 18 plus 13? 31. And 31 plus 6, you get 37. Now we found out the total. 
So how we find out the mean? Mean is equal to total XF three thousand seven hundred seventy-eight divided by the total number. So what's the total? We found that's fifty-five divided by fifty-five. So we we'll divide. We have to use long division. So I'll do it here. Three thousand seven hundred seventy-eight divided by fifty-five. Roughly, how much? If we take six, it's possible. Six times five, thirty. Six times five, thirty plus three, thirty-three. When you subtract, you get forty-seven. For four hundred seventy-eight, how many fifty-fives? Eight. Eight times five, forty. Four remaining. Eight times five, forty, plus four, forty-four. So here you get thirty-eight. So we'll take one more decimal place. Three hundred eighty divided by fifty-five. Six. Six or seven. You can take seven. Just check seven times five, thirty-five. Seven times five, thirty-five. So it's more than. So that's six. So roughly sixty-eight point six. So mean you can get sixty-eight point six. That's the mean value. So we covered all theory and exercise in your grade nine textbook. So I hope that you will join with me to do. Your next year mathematics—that's grade ten work.